Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and it's not like all the other times where I say we're going to do something a little bit different. Today we actually are. I'll see you in a bit. Pickle job, pickle job, miniatures, excellent. Now when I said that we were doing something a bit different today, we're making some life-size terrain. We've got behind here a big block of foam and we're making a dry stone wall. I agreed to this a while ago, now I'm regretting it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how we get on. Now, I think it's time for a little bit of context as to what we're doing here. For those of you that don't know, myself and Wendy are part of a musical theatre group here in our local town, and we put shows on and we appear on stage and we dance and we sing. And as part of that, we like to get involved with set building, prop making, costume stuff, any way that we can save money for the society. The theatre group is Maltby Musical Theatre Group, and this year the show that they're putting on is Calendar Girls. Now when we were looking at hiring the set for Calendar Girls, it was going to cost somewhere in the region of three, three and a half thousand pounds to hire, essentially, a dry stone wall. And I said, well, I make stuff out of foam for small scale stuff. I'm almost 100% certain that the skills are transferable to larger scale, so I'll make you a wall. And then I forgot about it. And here we are now. So the first thing that we needed to do was get all three blocks cut in half so that we'd got six lengths of foam that we could make the wall out of. This essentially doubled the amount of wall that we were gonna have. And in my head, again, I thought, well, that'll be easy because we can just do it with a hot wire cutter. Uh, but we did not have a hot wire cutter big enough. So we ended up using hand saws, but they weren't long enough to cut through to the middle. So we ended up using a, like, a discarded, like old sort of sawing band or something from some of the machinery that is around the place. Eventually we managed to get through this first block. I think it took about two hours to get it cut in half, um, but we did get through it in the end. Looking around the place we were working, I would have thought that some of this machinery would have been useful somehow for cutting foam in half, but apparently it wasn't. So this was the first hurdle that we had to pass, was getting it cut in half with tools that maybe weren't designed especially for cutting foam. And that's one of the differences between doing stuff on a smaller scale compared to a larger scale, is that the tools that you need and that you need to use to, to work with it are obviously need to be scaled up as well and that's one thing that I, I didn't really think about if I'm completely honest um, yeah a little bit of an oversight on my part in the end we got through all three blocks it did take a morning and an afternoon but we got through it all and then we put it all to one side ready for the next time that we came to work on this project Now, when this wall is finished, it's going to look great on stage, but it can't protect my personal information when I'm online. So instead, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, which is Aura. Aura is an all-in-one online security platform that can help you manage everything from keeping a track of your passwords to locking down your credit score to managing what your kids can access when they're online. Aura can alert you to any suspicious activity on your account almost instantly via the app or website, up to four times faster than other options on the market. Not only that, but Aura can also be used to remove your details from data brokers' accounts, reducing advertising and telemarketing calls, and can even find your details on the dark web and tell you where those details came from, making you aware of any data breaches that you've been a part of. All of these features combined will allow you to take back control of your privacy and enjoy stress-free internet use. If you want to have a go with this yourself and try Aura out, check out the link on screen now and down below in the description for a two-week free trial. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring the channel and supporting creators. Now, back to the video. Now that all the sections of foam were cut out and stuff, it was time to start making it look more like a wall and not just like six blocks of foam. So we started drawing on the rough shapes for the stones and stuff like that for the wall, trying to use some of the texture that we'd got when we cut it in half. It wasn't a clean cut all the way through. We got a bulge on one side and then an indentation on the other side, but we decided to try and use that so that it adds to that sort of natural look of stones. One of the things that I was telling the guys when we were doing this is that the more randomness we can throw in there, the less like routine and structure there was to this, the more realistic it would look because stones come in all shapes and sizes. And when you're making a dry stone wall, you use whatever you can get your hands on. 
So we started doing that. Carving actually was fairly simple at this point. We used a variety of hot wire foam cutters to carve in the, the top stones on the tops and then carving the gaps between the stones on the face of the wall. Not going too deep with these, uh, but just deep enough so that you can tell that there's different stones within that. One of the things that was actually really fun about this entire project was it gave me an opportunity to show some of the guys that I do the theater with what sort of things it is that I do with miniatures. Obviously this is on a much bigger scale, but using things like hot wire foam cutters and talking about how to texture things and how to paint things and different techniques and stuff that I think are just commonplace because I do them all the time and seeing how the guys sort of took them and did them themselves and really got involved and, and got into it and had a fun time while we were making this project. Now to texture this foam, because it's the bobbly stuff and not just the flat stuff, I needed to do something other than roll tinfoil on it. And I'd seen a heat gun flamethrower thing in the corner, and I'm, I'll be honest, I was dying for an excuse to have a go with it. So I tried it on a test piece of foam just to see what would happen if I just sort of dusted it over the top. And what it does is it seals it all in, it toughens the exterior of the foam, and it gives it a really nice texture that is absolutely perfect for sort of stone and rock. So once we'd finished carving the face of each of the stone walls, I gave this a quick blast over, texturing it up, adding a bit more in some places where it's been more weathered and a little bit less in other places. And in the end, it looked absolutely awesome. One of the things that I had to start thinking about was how I was going to protect the foam when it came to painting them. There was a few different options for painting, but the one that I wanted to go with was spray paint because I would get more of the look that I wanted by dusting the spray paints over them. But I can't just go straight in with the spray paint because the polystyrene would melt because of the type of polystyrene that it is. To counteract that, while some of the other foam was still being carved and cut by some of the other guys, me and Wendy started putting base coat down of PVA glue and just some cheap craft paint, mainly so we could see where we'd been and to kind of act as a base coat as well. But this would protect the foam. Now at this point the foam is pretty dense because we've done the flamethrower over it and that's condensed it and toughened the exterior of it whilst leaving it still light because the inside is mostly just air. We then put this thinned down PVA paint mixture over the top, again to act as a base coat and to protect so that I could go in with spray paints at a later point. Now base coating the foam and protecting it is something that we don't have to think about as much when we're doing miniature stuff because you just get some Mod Podge or some PVA or whatever, you chuck it on and it's done. It doesn't take long because it's miniature. We were base coating 12 meters of dry stone wall. So it did take a little bit longer than maybe some miniature stuff. I think we spent four Saturdays in total from start to finish on this project. And in that time, we had different people coming down and helping on different days. Everyone had a go at everything. So Wendy came down to help base coat, but she wanted to also have a go with the hot wire cutters because it's not something she's used before. And she got to have a go with it and she enjoyed doing it. And I hope that that's actually given her a bit of interest in doing some terrain stuff later on on the channel as well. Now I'm obviously not going to paint this by brush, I've already mentioned I'm using rattle cans for this. The reason I'm using rattle cans is because I will get that nice variety and randomness in the colour. Because I'm not putting a full solid coat on, I'm leaving some of the base coat coming through, I'm going to put greys and blacks and later on some greens in different patches, in different intensities and opacities, so that they all cover differently. And that way, what we'll get is more of a random look, which will sell it a bit more and make it look that little bit more real. And that's the thing that I wanted to try and do with this the most, is add loads of randomness into it, which will sell the realism. I used one of the greens from Colorforge as well, just to add a little bit of that sort of slimy, mossy texture to some of the stones again just to add a little bit more variety and then i did have an idea to start adding a little bit of glue and static grass to some of the stuck out stones just to look like some thick moss now it doesn't look great on this clip here but later on when we get to theater i'm going to add more of this because it will help cover the joins between the different pieces of wall as well and it's just one of those last things that i want to do to finish everything off and tidy it all up I just wanted to try a little bit while we were putting the wall together just to see what it would look like from a viewer's perspective. Now at this point, I'm pretty happy with how the wall looked. There's obvious gaps between the different sections, but we'll sort that when we get to the theater. I'm pretty happy though with the coloring and the shading and things like that. When we get to the theater and it goes under stage lighting, I'm hoping that this is gonna look absolutely fantastic. 
but we'll fix any issues and area any errors that we've gotten. This should look pretty cool. So once we'd got the wall to the theatre, it was relatively undamaged. There were a couple of little bits I needed to tidy up. But the first job that I needed to get sorted was attaching all the walls together. For that, I'm using a bit of expanding foam because A, it's cheap, and B, it'll come off nice and easy when we come to taking this apart later. And I'm filling the gaps so that it adds a little bit of solidity to hold the wall together. And also it hides those gaps. It makes it look like one piece of wall rather than a few different sections stood next to each other. Once I was happy enough with that and I'd done a few repairs, I started adding on some more static grass to a few other places. I got a massive tub of this because I knew I was going to need a lot of it. And rather than using the applicator, I'm kind of just putting it on in dribs and drabs and putting chunks of it on because I want it to be quite uneven and rough and look like moss that's growing out of the different cracks and growing where moisture would get to it. We're using some plastic plants at the bottom of the wall just to hide the flat edge of the bottom of it and to take the edge off of the shine of these because they're plastic plants I'm just spraying them with some matte coloured paints a couple of different greens just so that they look more natural than they would do if you left them as plastic. I spent the last little bit of time getting the set ready just going around adding colours where I thought they needed to be tidying bits up and then it was done. This has been such a fun project to have a go at. It's been a massive group effort and we've all had an absolute blast. It's been especially fun for me trying to see if the skills and techniques that I use for miniature scale stuff is transferable to real life one-to-one -one scale stuff. By and large, yes, the skills are the same. It's just the tools that are a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, leave a like down below. Massive thank you to all my Patreons. You guys are awesome. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. And thank you to Maltby Musical Theatre Group for trusting me to build this wall. I'll catch you next time, guys. And until then, enjoy your hobby.